Hello and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in and for choosing to spend some of your time with me. I'm Maria Milagros and this is a little space where I like to carve out and share different tips, tools, techniques, nuggets, stories, anecdotes, different things that I do that I give to attendees who come to my workshops or to the conferences that I speak at or to my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients or small group clients. These are the actual tools that I use in my life and share with other people so that we can move the needle even if it's one degree at a time to new levels of healthy and happy, whatever that means for this moment in our lives. This month, I'm talking about abundance and really creating an abundance mindset because I recognize that even if money flows into your life and you have money, if you do not have an abundance mindset, you will sabotage, right? Because if you're coming from a poverty mindset and you grew up either in the idea of actually in poverty or in the idea of scarcity and you have not retrained your brain, you will find ways to sabotage yourself because you're kicking back into the old programming. Last week, I talked about my financial past a little bit and the three really important questions that we need to be asking ourselves to understand where we are right now in our relationship with money. Because the bottom line is that it is a relationship right? And if I'm not dealing with my past and my stuff and my traumas, I'm going to bring all that baggage into my everyday relationships. Same thing with money. If I'm not dealing with my past, my traumas when it comes to money, I'm going to bring all of that mess into my current day relationship with money, regardless of how much money I'm making and is going to create problems for me because I'm going to sabotage due to my traumas right? So it is really important that we understand where we come from. And in the last video, and I'll post it here at the end, if you missed that, I share about my past and I give those three questions. Do that work first and foremost, right? Become really aware of what it is. And then when we are participating in keeping that story alive, that's really important. Okay. So the second thing is this week, we're going to talk about the present moment. And I'm going to give you five things that you can do in the present moment to help alter and create a different mindset when it comes to money. Two of them are questions you're going to ask yourself. One of them is a nugget. And then two of them are actually action steps. So let's dive right in. The first thing that I'm going to suggest is that you answer the question, what does success mean to you? How do you personally define success? And this might require you to really sit down, Get away from your phone, get away from the ideas of everybody else's pouring into your head and really think about what does success mean to you, right? And then part two or the second question is what does financial freedom mean to you? Because those can be kind of different in terms of um, how we define them, but they also play well together. So how you define success and how you define financial freedom can play really well together. And it's really good to have a clear definition of what we want those things to look like so that we can create a roadmap to help us get there, right? I say, I use this example a lot because it's an easy example. If you are at the mall and you are looking for Foot Locker and you find the X, you are here. Now I know where I'm at. I've done the work. I understand where I'm at. I'm paying attention. I am aware. I've understood my past and I know where I'm headed. This is how I define success. This is how I define financial freedom. And I know where I'm headed. I can create a map like a, a pathway rather to get myself there. And if I need to see a couple of detours along the way, I'll know what I'm doing and what, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Okay. So this is why it's important to practice awareness, understand where we're coming from, and then be intentional about where we're going. But we have to define that where we're going. So one, again, how do you define success? Two, how do you define financial freedom? Or rather, what does financial freedom mean to you? What would it mean to you to be financially free? What would it feel like? What would it taste like? No, seriously, get your senses involved. What would it look like? What would it sound like? Financial freedom. Get as clear as you possibly can so that when you hold that visualization with all of your senses, you're more likely to be able to pick up on different opportunities and things that are happening around you to help bring that in, which makes you an attraction magnet for that version of financial freedom, whatever you decided it would be. Okay, that was two. The third thing that I'm going to suggest is that you really pay attention to, this is the third nugget, pay attention to whether or not you are living to try to prove something or impress someone. This is really important because I know people who are financially wealthy and yet they live paycheck to paycheck and they're going for broke. 
because they're living in a way that they are trying to prove themselves with the brands or the newest car or the newest phone or the newest whatever. And they are going for broke, trying to prove themselves and impress God knows who. Other people on social media, I don't know, right? Really, it's time to self-assess because I know too many people who are making six-figure salaries and can't afford to take a family vacation. Now, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's because you are misprioritizing what's happening with your money and you're living in a way that you feel like you either need to prove yourself to someone or you're trying to impress someone. And again, both of those, they play together real nice, nice. So I would really recommend understanding when you think about financial freedom, when you think about how you decorate your house, when you think about the clothes that you wear, when you think about how you show up in the world, what is the underlying reason for that? Is it so that other people can see you and say, oh yeah, she's made it. Look at all her stuff. Or is it for you? Because I don't have a problem with nice cars. I don't have a problem with, you know, nice technology that's going to create more ease in your life. I love good quality clothing. Right. I listen, we grew up so poor. It was all hand me downs. And then when it wasn't, it was really cheap material that you couldn't wash it and then dry it because it would shift and shrink. So I like good quality material that I'm willing to pay for. But that's for me. That's not about a brand across my chest to impress anyone else. And I can't honestly say that I ever was that person growing up either because I just, I, one, I couldn't afford it growing up. So I kind of dismissed this idea that I needed to impress anybody because I, I couldn't, I literally couldn't. And then as I got older, it was more about quality versus branding, right? And I'm willing to invest in better quality because I know it's going to last me longer and then I don't need as much stuff. Just saying. So that that's me. Um, so that's the, that's the third thing. Really think about whether or not you're living in such a way that you are trying to prove something or impress someone because that can be really hindering and it will never be sustainable and you will never attain it because the moving needle for what is the proof is always moving. That's why it's called a moving needle. All right, the fourth thing um, that I want you to, c to consider is really creating a budget for yourself. Look at how much money you have and then write out your dreams and your goals and think about how can you create a budget using your realistic day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month services rendered, like your mortgage or your rent, like your car payment, like how much gas are you spending, right? Really start paying attention to those things and then look at your dreams and say, okay, how can I either create a savings account or start moving the needle one degree at a time to really supply the funding for these dreams, right? Because the money is available. Ugh, that's, that's another thing. We got to pack that another time, but the money is available. It's just whether or not you are properly allocating your own funds to make it happen and, and, and changing your energy and your mindset about money so that you can attract more money. And there's literally hundreds of ways that we can do that, attract more money. It could be a pay raise. It could be money in the mail that you didn't even know was coming. That's what I held up this check. I got this check today and I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even know. I'll take it. Thank you. I got the money. And finally, the last thing that I want to share is this creating an abundance mindset, right? So it's really a gratitude practice that is strictly for abundance. So when I do my gratitude in the morning, I do a couple of things that I'm grateful for, right? And then I always look around and I say, okay, what in this space represents abundance? I have a dresser drawer filled with clothes, abundance. I have a closet filled with clothes, abundance. I have a shoe rack with shoes, abundance. I have more than one pair, abundance. I have several blankets on my bed, abundance. I have a bunch of pillows. Some of them end up on the floor, abundance. I have a whole drawer just for socks, abundance, right? There's all these things in my everyday life that represent, in my space that represent abundance. Okay. Then I go, what is it in nature that represents or in the world outside of my home that represents abundance? When I'm driving on the street and I look around and everybody has their own car, there's not 19 people piled into a car. It's like, one, maybe two people per car. That's a representation of abundance. There are trees that are dropping their leaves and it just started. And all the trees, abundance. And all of their leaves, abundance. And then people walking up and down the streets, abundance. There's an abundance that's happening all around us. We just have to be willing to shift our perspective with this practice so that we can be aware of, perceive, take in the abundance. And then the more that we practice this idea of abundance, the more that we attract 
opportunities to make abundance. We see abundance. We're aware of abundance. We move in spaces of abundance. We increase our own abundance. So I do my physical space. Then I do the physical world. And then I do within myself. What do I have that I have 10 fingers? Abundance. I have two functioning arms. Abundance. My heart works. Abundance. I have people who I love and people who love me. Abundance, 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 right? Really create an abundance practice. Create an abundance practice for yourself that allows you to see abundance all the time and all around you, which will help increase and amplify the abundance because the reticular activating system, I'll add that video if you don't know what I'm talking about to the end of this as well so that you can understand how to access and utilize that part of the brain to attract more abundance. Okay, next week we're going to talk about future. So you have five things on your to-do list, or rather two questions, a little nugget, and then two action steps, that budget and that abundance practice. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. I'm sending you love and light, and I hope money and abundance starts flowing into your life in new ways, simply because you started a new practice. Peace out. (laughs) 